Are you looking to become a freelance instructional designer but don't know where to start? Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you all the details on how I landed my first contract. Be sure to stick around because later in this video, I actually interview the client who hired me and they'll tell you exactly how they made their decision. Hello, I'm Sabrina Gonzalez and I'm a freelance instructional designer and a bootcamp pro on Devlin's team. But just last year, I left teaching and was looking to find my first instructional design opportunity. In today's video, I'm going to tell you the steps I took to land this first contract ID job, let you hear from my client, and give you some tips on how to land your own clients. Before I start, I do just want to give a little disclaimer that I did join Devlin's Instructional Design Bootcamp at the end of 2022, and it played a really big part in my instructional design journey. So I first want to talk about my experience in the bootcamp and how it led to my first client. Then later in the video, I'll give some suggestions on what you can do if you're not in the boot camp to land your first client. So, like I said, I joined the boot camp at the end of 2022 and I treated it like my full time job because I wanted to be a competent and competitive instructional designer. My goal at the time was to land a full time remote ID job. The thought of freelancing was not even on my radar. Like I. I had heard that people can do freelancing um, contract instructional design work, but it's not even something I considered. I thought it actually sounded really scary because it sounded difficult to find clients. And like, where do you even find clients? How do you even start? There was like too, too much to think about and it was kind of overwhelming. So I didn't even worry about that. What I focused on was upskilling. Through the bootcamp, I was able to build the skills I saw in instructional design job descriptions. I created or designed and developed my flagship project, created my portfolio, and set up a LinkedIn profile for full time opportunities. Uh, during this upskilling journey, I became more confident in my ID abilities, and the thought of freelancing became more appealing and less scary because I was starting to get that confidence of, like, oh, yeah, I, I can do this. I, I can definitely do the work. Like once I'm on the job, I can do this. So yeah, maybe, maybe I can freelance. And I was really excited about the idea of freelancing because of the flexibility. Like for example, if I needed to take my dogs to the vet, like I could guilt free as a former teacher, it's, I know it's hard to like take from work because someone's gonna have to cover for you. You got to do all this prep, but that idea of freelancing, I could, I could flex my time however I needed to. And that was kind of exciting. Um, as long as I'm meeting deadlines, I kind of have autonomy over my schedule, which is very appealing. Also, while I was upskilling, I really fell in love with visual design and e-learning development specifically. And so knowing as a freelancer that I can hone in and say like, those are the jobs I want, that's the work I want to do was like really exciting because how often do you really get to choose exactly what tasks you're doing? So that idea of freelancing was was becoming a little less scary and a little bit more exciting. So now with this idea of like, okay, maybe I can freelance. I started to learn more about freelancing from Devlin's videos, um, his ID community and our bootcamp pros, Robbie Christian and Nicole Stevens. I went to weekly workshops um, in the bootcamp and was able to ask them about their experience freelancing and really learn more about like, what does it mean to be like a freelance instructional designer? The pros, Robbie and Nicole, were very instrumental in my decision to pursue freelance because a lot of the time, even now, they believe in my abilities more than I do sometimes. And they're always like they're encouraging me and really like reassuring me that like I definitely have what it takes to have a career as a freelance ID or just an ID in general, really, but that I could do freelance as well. If, if you're interested in becoming an ID and working with me and the other bootcamp pros, you can learn more about Devlin's instructional design bootcamp by going to idbootcamp.com and the link is in the description down below. All right, so I go through my time in the bootcamp, upskilling, learning the skills necessary to be an instructional designer, build my flagship, my portfolio, get on LinkedIn, make a resume or like redo my resume so it's really good. And I'm out <laughs> in the world looking for a job. I was excited about freelancing, but still kind of unsure. So I made sure to apply to full-time work, part-time work and contract roles. I wanted to make sure that all my bases were covered. Um, and in case I wasn't sure about freelance, like 
I, I was also applying to full-time jobs. Uh, during this job search, I was encouraged by Devlin and the other bootcamp pros to post my flagship project on LinkedIn, which was a fantastic decision because once I did this, that led to people seeing my portfolio website. So they saw my post on LinkedIn, got to experience the flagship project I created that led them to my LinkedIn profile, which then led to my portfolio. When they landed on my portfolio, they were able to see um, another project that I had done and then we're using my contact form to contact me about work. And so this idea of freelancing was really starting to look like a real possibility. And with this new traction, I decided to go all in. I was going to focus solely on contract work and make my freelance career a reality. In the boot camp, we have weekly workshops with Devlin and the pros. And so in a couple of those weekly workshops, Devlin helped me to optimize my LinkedIn profile for contract work. Doing this increased the number of times I was showing up in search results. So with my original um, LinkedIn profile, like I think it's like one day a week, it'll show you like how many searches you appeared in. And I was averaging around like 30 searches per week. But then when Devlin helped me optimize my LinkedIn profile, I was showing up in over 1,800 searches per week. And that's remained very consistent since we optimized my profile. It's so like even now, that's how many searches I'm showing up in. And that has actually greatly increased the number of recruiters that have reached out to me for work. So before I had it out there and wasn't like really getting any attention on there unless I was actively pursuing things. But once I optimized my LinkedIn profile, then I had people coming to me. So that was really great and exciting to see. I was really starting to reassure that decision that like, yeah, I could do freelance. Um, another thing I did was I made sure that the bootcamp pros, former boot campers, and just other people in my network knew that I was going to pursue freelance ID work. That way that I could get some referrals for work. This led to a conversation with an agency about work, but when they had reached out to me, I had already booked some things and ended up having to tell them like, let's hold, I might have availability later, which is a good problem to have. Another thing that helped me with my like decision to move into freelancing was um, letting Devlin know as well that I wanted to pursue freelance instructional design. And so when they added my portfolio to the website, to his website in the showcase, um, I was put under like the freelancer section and a lot of my traction on my website, like when I check the analytics, they're all coming from LinkedIn or from the showcase page on Devlin's website. There's a small portion of people who actually are coming from a direct link on my portfolio. And that's because if I'm on LinkedIn and there's a post in my feed that looks like some contract work that I'm interested in, I'm in the comments saying like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This sounds great. I'm interested. Check out my work. And I send a link to my portfolio. That's actually how I found this first client. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, can you please tell us about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. I am Megan Tice. I work for a healthcare solutions company uh, called Home Care Pulse. And one of our solutions is training, uh, training for caregivers, uh, care professionals, clinicians in the post-acute space. Uh, so yeah, there I, I lead the team of instructional designers and we have a full-time team as well as a contract team. Yeah, the, the work that Home Care Pulse does is something that was really appealing to me, which is like um, having my dad have gone through like a hospice care facility and seeing that you guys help those that work in those facilities, like making sure that they're able to handle those things and work with their yeah. clients and things that that was really exciting to me of just like, oh, these they're doing great things. <laughs> I want to be a part of that. But yeah, no, I it's so rewarding. You know, it's all training is rewarding, right? Because the end goal is to ultimately enact change somewhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's to know that we are providing education for, you know, care professionals who may have never had any formal education in client care. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how this relationship happened. Um, I had saw you made a post on LinkedIn around like the beginning of May. 
And it sounded exactly like the kind of work I'd been wanting to do that like focus on e-learning development and then being able to do some visual design stuff. It sounded very exciting. So I am wondering what kind of skills were you looking for when you hire a contract ID? Absolutely. Yeah. So like I mentioned, we have a team of full-time IDs and then we have a team of contract IDs. So we have a system in place, uh, you know, a pretty well-oiled machine, if you will. So when we look for contractors, I always look for someone who I feel like can kind of jump in with both feet, who can complete projects with, you know, little handholding, um, you know, <laughs> that I can trust will also communicate with me uh, if anything pops up. Um, so what I typically look for is someone with a solid understanding of the tools we use. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, Storyline, uh, Beyond, I love to see some Beyond development work. It's always fun. Yeah. Um, and then someone who is a strong critical thinker, a strong continuous learner. Mm -hmm. And those things are often hard to gauge you know, you can tell me that you're a critical thinker, but how do you prove that you're a critical right. thinker? Right. Um, so that one is tough. But in an interview, I typically typically look for someone who asks a lot of questions okay. uh, or who, who has done their research into the company, mm -hmm. um, knows what we do. That's huge. Um, yeah. Not going in blind to an interview. Uh, that's, Yeah really important to me. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. Someone with experience storyboarding, that's huge too. Um, the storyboard is key for me anyway to complete a cohesive project. So when I see someone who has strong storyboarding skills, strong analytical skills, that's really important. Um, and then the ability to teach through visuals, right? Mm -hmm. um, to be able to have that strong visual design and somewhat of a graphic design background. Um, it's not the most important thing, but it's definitely a plus. Yeah, definitely. Um, I even like the distinction you made of like your contract work of just something that someone that can be a little bit more independent. Cause that is kind of the the difference I think between contract mm -hmm. and like full-time is like full-time you have a team. And so you can, you have the opportunity to learn and lean on people, but with contract, yeah, I mean, you can still ask questions and and get that like feedback. Um, but you're, you're really, it's, it's up to you to make those decisions and do those things. It is. Um, you have to trust yourself, you know, and definitely be confident in yourself. Um, uh, and something too, that I think is important is for when you are a contractor to determine the level of need that the organization is asking for. Mm -hmm. So in our instance, we have a process. So I'm always looking for someone who can come in and understand our process, but also respect it, um, you know, because that's challenging as a contractor when you're jumping from client to client and mm -hmm. some clients have different expectations than others. Uh, yeah. I imagine that's pretty tough. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. It seems to be a different process, like with everyone, or if you're the one like pursuing that work and you are like, you make up that process. And so trying yeah. to find like, what works with each individual client is, yeah, definitely a juggle for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So you had this post on LinkedIn. Like I said, I was really excited about the opportunity because it sounded exactly like what I wanted to do. So I sent you a link to my portfolio website. And what was your first impression? Well, so my first impression was one word and it was yes. <laughs> when you know that, you know, like I've yeah. seen as a hiring manager, I've been doing this for several years. I've seen a lot of portfolios. And so when you see one and you know, it's right, it's an easy yes. Okay. Um, that said, I mean, you have an amazing website. You have everything you need there. Um you know, access to your thought process, right? Your storyboard, your, um, what you have some charts on there, some action mapping, yep. all the things. And then after looking at all of that, you have the link to your final project. So I can see from start to finish your thought process. And that was 
amazing. And it was obvious to me that you knew, you knew what you were doing. Um, so, you know, that was an easy one. Um, that said, you don't need, I don't think you need a snazzy website to get hired. Right. Um, I've hired someone off of a beyond video, mm -hmm. uh, just seeing, you know, the complexity of the video and understanding, okay, they know what they're doing. Yeah. 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 Definitely think, yeah, finding some way to showcase your work, whether it mm -hmm. is a website or a different kind of portfolio, I think just that ability to showcase what you can do and explain what you've done to get to that final product is definitely important. I know when I was writing my process write-ups for my portfolio, it was really hard to narrow things down because I was like, oh no, this is really important and I want to make sure I highlight this. And so my write-up does end up being kind of long, especially for my walk the walk project. Um, but it, I felt everything there was important and that like to showcase really like what I can do. I think it's better to have too much than too little. You know, I've... Yeah. I've seen other portfolios that are linked to three or four rise courses and little context. And so you might be an amazing instructional designer, but you know, a rise course is a template. So mm -hmm. there's no, you're not showing me your skill set, you know? Yeah. Uh, so like you said, I think it's important to kind of showcase what you can do and pay attention to your strong suit. So if your like visual design is amazing and you know it, then run with it, you know, let me see that. Yeah. Even if it's just a PDF that you created or, you know, something. If your storyboarding, if your critical thinking is really exceptionally strong, then use that and leverage that. So after you were able to take a look at my portfolio, um, what about it specifically wanted made you want to reach out for an interview? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so it was clear, it was consistent. It was um, very thorough, your portfolio. Um, based on your project, your sample project, which you had a few, but I remember one in particular. Um, I looked at it and the, the story or the storyboard was clear. The navigation was clear. The learn, like I didn't know anything about working for an animal shelter, but after I took your course, I, I learned something, you know? Yeah. So one, did I learn something from your portfolio or from your course? Mm -hmm. Two, is it visually appealing? Is it cohesive? Three, is the navigation and the UX of it up to par? And that's something, it seems really simple but it's a quick example of something I immediately look for. So on your title slide, if you have a start button or a start course button, have you hidden the back next button on the player? Got it. Yeah. It's really simple, but it's something that I look for to kind of gauge, okay, are they paying attention to the navigation, to the user experience? Because if there's two ways to advance, that you know, it's yeah. something that you're not thinking about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that those those are important pieces too. And just even on the screen with like, are things close together that should be so that you know they're going together? Like it's just mm -hmm. the little things of like, you you may have directions for your navigation, but is your navigation anywhere near those directions to like find those things? Or having the player open with buttons and buttons on your slide. Yeah, that can be really frustrating to a user for sure. Absolutely. So yeah, just seeing, you know, I work through a lot of sample projects. And so those are the big three for me. Did I learn something? Is it visually appealing? And is the u user experience of it clean and easy? Yeah, I think uh, the visually appealing piece too is something that gets overlooked as well because it's like, well, yeah, like, are you going to learn if it's pretty? But that's not necessarily the case, right? Like, do you have something that can hook your learners? Do you have something that like they want to learn from? And so that those mm -hmm. visuals are very important, like you said. Yes, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, I, I see a lot of debate about that, you know, like the visual design doesn't matter. You don't have to be an artist. And that's true to an extent. But if the visual design of your course is not there or it's not appealing, it's the first thing that a learner sees. Right. 
So if it's distracting or it it's very PC and patched together, that's what they're going to pay attention to. They're not going to learn. They're going to think this doesn't match with this. And well, where do, what do I do now? Where do I go next? And so it's, it's tough to say this, but I think all of that has to be there yeah. for a project to really work. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> Okay, right, so we did um, kind of like a short interview talking about the storyboarding process, um, why it was important. And then you had asked about if I was interested in creating a sample project, which sometimes that that is like a scary thing when you get asked to do a sample project because you don't know if it's like <laughs> they're just trying to take some of your work or if it's legitimate that right. they want to see what, what you can do. Um, and I felt really comfortable doing the sample project for HCP because it was such a small snippet and you were very upfront about that. Just like, it's this tiny piece from this one hour course. And so I didn't feel like I was being taken advantage of. And then you would explain the reason was to see if as a contractor, I was able to translate that content Mm -hmm. into some kind of learning experience. So with those two combined, like I felt very confident and comfortable to do that kind of work. So thank you again for that transparency um, because that can be a scary process. Um, when you saw that sample course for the first time, but what were your thoughts? I thought it checked the boxes for my big three, you know, (laughs) it, I learned something, it was appealing and the navigation was clean. And so I knew that it was going to be a good relationship. Um, something else that I really pay attention to outside of the project for this kind of situation is your communication. When you're a contractor, that is huge. If there's not, if the communication is not there, it's not going to work. Right. So did you meet the deadline for the sample project? Were you clear? Did you ask questions about the project if you weren't sure? Um, were you timely when I reached out to you? All of those things are what I look for. Um, yeah. On top of, you know, a quality piece. And it's unfortunate in this day and age, from a hiring manager perspective, is the portfolio that you initially shared with me your work? Right. Because that does happen. Um, and it's happened to us before, where we hired somebody who had worked collaboratively with a team mm-hmm. on a course. And we did not ask for a sample project. We, we took them for their word at the project they submitted in their portfolio. And then the final project that they, re- that they gave us at the very end was nothing like their yes. sample or their por- portfolio. Right. So it's just, you know, it comes down to me to trust communication, mm-hmm. quality work. Are you going to, are you going to do what you say you're going to do? And you did. I mean, I was super, I was really thrilled to see you. your sample. It was cute. It was, <laughs> it was entertaining. Um, as much as it could be, it was on disaster planning and preparedness. So, Yeah. I, I did have a lot of fun creating it. And then like I said, I, had, I learned some like little animation tips in PowerPoint and things like that. So I, I had a lot of fun creating it. And that was I think even more of that like push of excitement for me of like, I really hope I get this contract because it's like, it's really, it's important content, um, but having that ability to like find ways to make it more memorable um, for the Mm -hmm. learner. Like that was, that was really exciting and appealing to me um, when I was hoping to land this contract. Well, it, it worked. You did great. (laughs) Um, And going back to what you said earlier, I really liked was that you have to hook your learner, right? And so the piece that I sent you, the little snippet was the hook. It was the very beginning of the course. Um, it was the piece where you pull your your learner in or you don't. Mm-hmm. And so um, I do think, you know, that that little snippet would have worked well to get someone's attention. Thank you. All right. So I did end up getting a contract with Home Care Pulse. Um, and now that I've finished my first course and I'm leading up to my, my second course now that I'm working on, I'm curious if with that first course has my work lived up to your expectations. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we were all thrilled. The entire team 
the entire team has seen your work uh, and really loved it. Um, it. It's not always easy working with SMEs, subject matter experts, right? Right. And and we had a kickoff meeting with a team of nurses, and you handled that brilliantly. Um, <laughs> any you know the communication was great. Um, any concerns you addressed right away. There was a point in the course where we kind of pivoted a little bit and, you know, you understood that you didn't question it. Um, and that was really important. And it, it said a lot about who you are as a contractor. And ultimately I could tell that you wanted to, to meet the assignment, but also create a really great course. And you did. Thank you. Yeah, I now that you've brought up the like our kickoff meeting, I've found like the entire process with working with you and your team like so I don't like I, I don't even have words to describe it. like it's been so smooth and seamless that like even though it was my first time working with you guys, I like felt like I knew what to expect. Like you you laid out the process very clearly and so I knew like okay, I'm going to have I need to read through the content, get my storyboard ready so that I can go to this kickoff meeting. And these are the kinds of questions I should prepare because now is when I have a chance to talk to this me and mm -hmm. like was able to do that. And then um, working through the prototype, knowing that when I send the prototype to expect lots of feedback, because mm -hmm. this is really where that like teamwork is going to like, like happen. And yeah. knowing that like the feedback I get isn't necessarily like critical of the decisions I'm making, but it's because you've worked in this area. So you know what kind of, projects need to happen and what needs to be built. And so lending that expertise and just making sure that we're all on the same page. So that was, it was really helpful. And, and there was never once that like, I felt worried about asking questions in the process or um, even just like nervous to like turn in work. I was like excited, like, okay, this is done. And I, I want to know what they think so that I can make it even better. So the, the whole process has felt really great. Um, even up to like the full build and then testing it on the LMS, like the, the whole process has been so smooth. So I, I think that speaks a lot about, about you and home care pulse and just how you guys run things that it's a well-oiled machine for sure. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, no, it's always, you know, it's nerve wracking from this side too, because we want it to work for you. Um, you know, if it's not working or there's a disconnect, it will affect the final product. And so I think it was seamless. It really was. And I appreciate all of your effort. Uh, everyone was really thrilled with you just in general. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity for sure. Um, one thing that I, I found that was kind of like funny is Scott Schmidt also did a project with Home Care yeah. Pools. So it was interesting. So like Scott and I know each other from Devlin's Boot Camp. And I had saw the post on LinkedIn and commented. He saw mm -hmm. my comment. And so he commented. And then from there, it was kind of like, oh no, are we in competition with each other? So I'm like, no. I know, I know he's, <laughs> he's a really good at storyline, but I think my visual dis design skills can compete with his. <laughs> it was really funny. And we kept our whole process so separate <laughs> the whole time until we sent in our sample course and we're like, okay, now let's talk about it. And then we both <laughs> got funny. off the contract. So it was, it was really, it was really funny just to like, that we both like we're on this like parallel path as mm -hmm. like because he's also a former teacher and mm -hmm. then went to the boot camp and then that like this was like one of our our like first paid pieces it was really mm -hmm. it was really interesting that that's like how it just happened um and now we work together with devlin's boot camp <laughs> that's great I, I love that you had that friendly competition up yeah. front i didn't know if you guys knew each other either and so you know we do hire a lot of contractors so um i wasn't sure at what point to broach that subject but you, <laughs> you guys you knew about each other by the time i mentioned it um yeah. but i think you know that speaks a lot to devlin's program too mm -hmm. you know that you're both fairly new to instructional design and um that you know, I saw the value in both of your, your work. And so, yeah. you know, it, it is tough. It's tough to, as a hiring manager, to sift through portfolio after portfolio. And sometimes someone has a great portfolio and not so great communication. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to find that like 
magical mix where it all works. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, I appreciated what you guys brought to the table. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for your time. I really, I do really appreciate you sitting down um, here and to do this little quick interview. Appreciate it. It's also really nice for me to hear like the insight behind the scenes of how we got to this point. Um, so thank you. I don't know if you have any like last departing words. Um, I just want to thank you and and thank all transitioning teachers, you know, uh, thank you for your years of service and teaching because I could not have done it. Um, and I know it's like, it's, it's hard to shift and it feels like this uphill battle almost, you know, with everything that you need to learn and information overload here and there. And I think my biggest piece of advice for anyone coming in is to focus on what you're good at first. You know, and the rest will come, you'll practice, you'll learn, you'll, you'll grow, but focus on what you're good at and you'll get there. Yeah. Oh, well, well, thank you for that. I yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I want to thank Megan for the interview and her perspective. It was really nice to get that insight from her about what skills clients are looking for when they're hiring contract instructional designers. Um, it was also nice to hear that that message for transitioning teachers. Um, as a former educator, it's it's nice to hear when we have people in our corner who who want <laughs> the best for us and and are there to support us in this transition. Sometimes that can be kind of polarizing. Some people are really excited to help us and sometimes they're not. So, so it's great to hear that like positive message from her. The, the contract work that I'm doing with Megan, it actually directly <laughs> relates to all of the skills that I learned in the boot camp. Um, everything that I'm doing on that job, I learned those skills in the boot camp. Um, as I said earlier, Devlin's boot camp really played a big part and made a big difference in my journey to instructional design. Now I spend most of my time helping boot campers land their dream instructional design roles by giving one on one feedback. And I find it really, really fulfilling. And I'd, I'd love to help you on your journey. But if you're not able to join the boot camp, there are still things that you can do to land your first client. All right. So here's what you can do to help yourself land your first client. The first one is create a portfolio. A portfolio is huge for a freelance instructional designer. This is where you can really showcase the skills that you have and show clients what you bring to the table, why, why they should work with you. It was the thing that really got me in front of the right people to have the conversations so that I can start pulling in these work, pulling in work and like getting leads. Um, as you create your portfolio, you may be looking for resources. There's lots of content on this uh, channel where there are um, videos on how to create a portfolio and even lots of portfolio reviews. So you can see some really like high quality exemplary work. Um, if you're looking for other like places to find exemplary work, you can check out um, the showcase on Devlin's website at devlinpeck.com slash showcase. There are over 30 portfolios that are all really high quality, have great work. You can read through their write-ups to kind of see their process. You can experience their projects. You can learn more about their backgrounds. Um, it's a great, great resource to look at to kind of model your portfolios after and just use as, as a guide. The other thing you can do is try to get feedback from people in the field. If you can find a mentor who is currently an instructional designer, that's golden. Of course, this opportunity may be kind of hard to come by trying to find someone with availability, but there are people out there that want to help you. The next thing you can do is to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Um, like I said, optimizing my LinkedIn profile increased the amount of searches that I was showing up in and was increasing then the amount of recruiters that were approaching me for contract work. Along with optimizing your LinkedIn profile, it's really important to grow your network. Um, of course, the more connections you have, the more things you're going to see, the more um, like posts you're gonna be exposed to and things like that. But you wanna be strategic too about who you're connecting with. So other instructional designers, leaders in the field to learn from, hiring managers, um, even other people who are in, in the transition looking for work. That's actually some a group that I was kind of neglecting because I saw other people transitioning to instructional design 
we're kind of like the competition, right? We're going to be applying for the same roles. But really, that's exactly why you should connect with them, because they're seeing roles, you're seeing roles, and as people are commenting, those are going to start showing up on your feed more as well. As your connections comment on someone else's post, it shows up for you, and you can see those. And so you want to make those connections and be be strategic about who you're connecting with, but grow that network. That's really important. Another important thing to do is tell your network. Let them know that you're going to be start you're going to start taking on clients and you're looking for some of those freelance or contract opportunities. That's why growing your network is really important and then you can let them know that you're looking for work because it's not just you looking, right? They know that you're looking, so if they hear something, they can send it your way or if they have work to contract out, they can send it your way as well. All right, for next steps, you want to Make sure that you are on LinkedIn and networking. Do not underestimate the, the power of a good network. And if you'd like to, you can connect with our team on LinkedIn. The next thing is not really a next step, but just some words, words of encouragement. Don't sell yourself short. If you're putting in the work, you're learning the skills, somebody out there is going to see your value. And if you are at the beginning of your instructional design journey, or you just want some help in this transition, Consider joining the Instructional Design Bootcamp by going to idbootcamp.com, link in the description. And next month, we're actually going to be launching or doing a launch for our new cohort. So we'd, we'd love to have you and we'd love to help you and be a part of your journey. The other thing is don't forget to subscribe for more videos on transitioning into instructional design. Thank you for sticking to the end and hearing my story on how I landed my first client. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.